Melbourne, a city built on a rush for gold. And the block, that rush is hitting overdrive. How are you going? Good. Hello. Did we all enjoy running our very own small businesses yeah. today? Yeah, of course. You all did a fantastic job, but some better than others. All the money you made will be, of course, going back into your renovation budgets back at the block. The team, of course, that made the most money today will take home a further 5000 bucks from our friends at NAB. Huge money. Mm, hang on. Take two. Melbourne, a city where everything hangs in a wonderful balance. From the funky cafes to the street art to the commuter-friendly public transport. It all comes together in a hustling, bustling harmony. No, let's go again. Take three. Melbourne, a city where disharmony reigns. You guys just made it kind of clear that you thought we were fake and everything like that. Well, there is a certain truth to that. Oh, yes, folks. Strap yourselves in. Dark clouds are gathering. It's kitchen week. And the candle scandal that flared up yesterday is threatening to set fire to the whole block. It's the last day of the Open for Small Business Challenge. Yesterday, our teams had to set up their own pop-up market stalls, selling stock they've purchased from wholesalers from these shipping containers. Everyone's got money troubles, so this challenge is all about helping their renovating budgets. There's five grand prize money for the stall holder who makes the most profit. And by the way, everyone gets to keep what they make. So you obviously, you want to sell as much, much as you can to try and get as much money as you can. Yesterday, Jono and Trixie and the twins won the design category, judged to have the most inviting market store. Finally, we nearly, well, we won something. We're just not sure if it has any monetary value yet. Yeah. This morning, our winners are preparing to open their safety deposit boxes with their winning keys. Yeah, we're about to go down and open up two safety deposit boxes and hopefully there's some moolah in there. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We have some boxes to open here this morning. Before we do that, Beck and George would like to say something. Yep. So yesterday my dad came in to see me and visit um, with my sisters and they bought some items from our store. You want some candles, Dad? I know that you want candles. Yes. I put it for Mum's Mum's garden thing. I'm lighting there a fire for every day. Yes. How many have you got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's, not yeah fair. it's not fair. That if we were in Adelaide and we told all of our friends to come down and buy a you piece, you'd win like that. How did you know they bought something? Because I saw them interviewing Beck's dad, and he's he said, well, "What did you buy?" And he's like, oh, "I bought this and this and this and this and this and this." As if he's going to buy all that. Yeah. And we, we don't know how many of our friends have been through. Some couples thought it was an unfair advantage and some couples disagreed. But after discussing it with George last night, we have decided that it'd be fair if we just gave everybody a share of what my father spent so we can just start from scratch today and it's just done and dusted. The ball's in their court. I'm giving them the option. And what we had suggested yesterday was that it came off the total of the day's sales, not that you paid anyone any money. That was your idea and I get that that's maybe what you feel comfortable with but we don't feel comfortable taking money. I guess we saw it as possibly being unfair because you're this is your hometown and you could get people to come and buy stuff. I had friends that wanted to come and see me yesterday and buy stuff and I said no my dad really just came my sister's leaving to go home today to Sydney and I'm not going to see no, it. Why are you looking at us? We didn't I don't bring it up. I mean. I'm just like, saying I'm talking why to are everybody. You us? I literally did not even bring it up yesterday and like I don't get why you just. Well, I just got the feel yesterday that, that you guys thought it was that way because I got a different feel well, from these guys. Well, it was probably more coming out to be fair, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 I just thought it was a bit pathetic, to be honest. And I know that they sympathise with everything that's going on, but I just thought the fact that they um, made an issue of it or the way they kind of accused me of cheating was was a bit rude. We stand here now and people say that they didn't have a problem with it, like this always happens, and. But that would be directed at us. And when we spoke to Lysandra, we said we understand where she's coming from. It is, if anybody was in their hometown, they're going to have advantage. But we also said to you, exactly we didn't care and we weren't going to do exactly anything about it. exactly what we said to me. You didn't say that you didn't care and you weren't going to do anything We about said it. that we didn't care. Yeah. But when the candle scandal first flared up yesterday, Trixie did seem bothered. It's not really that fair, I don't think. No. 
And so did Maddie. No, I don't think that's fair at all. <laughs> they both agreed that it wasn't fair. They never said that they weren't going to do, do anything what? about Trixie it. Trixie and Maddie are always like this. They tell us one thing of how they're feeling, and when they're actually questioned about it in front of the cameras, they say another thing. Maddie especially. All right, we haven't quite resolved anything yet. All the other teams get together, discuss what you want to do, and before we announce the winner tonight, we'll come up with a resolution. We happy with that? All right. Let's forget all that for a minute. We have some boxes to open. Trixie and Jono, three to you. And you're doing two. Yeah. Girls, two. The opening of safety deposit boxes is a hit and miss affair. Right, uh, Trixie and Jono, you can go first. Open your three boxes. Some contain things of value, some aren't of any use at all. Oh, wow. Oh, uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Last one. What is this? I don't know. Aww. Oh, it's oh. a penny. No, 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 oh. no. Oh. That is a gold sovereign from the 1800s worth a lot of money. Is it really? Thousands. Really? Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. That is a good buy. Hi, <laughs> right, Jono. Oh, it's a big bag. Oh, it's a oh, purse. It's a lovely purse. That will go very nicely with your T-shirt. It brings out your eyes. And that purse, I happen to know, retail price, over $3,000. What? It's a collector's item. Holy It's hell. an original. That's go. going straight over the shoulder, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Feels light. What? <laughs> <It's a> little... <laughs> Hang on, there's more. There's another one. It's, it's kind of a bonus, I think, that it's not just straight out cash and it was something cool that you got to see and then find out that it was worth a lot. Hopefully we get at least a thousand. Hopefully there's no smurfs or we don't want any angry smurfs. The twins won two safety deposit keys yesterday. Oh. They're books. I see money. Oh, we got $2,000. We got $2,000. Oh, it's a classic. Oh, money under there. We can play it on. Oh. But what what do you play it on? This is a classic. I had one of these. I remember having one of these as well. It's a Sadie Walkman. Oh, is there any money in there? <laughs> we could sell that at our vintage store today. Oh. We're going to sell that today, Scotty. All oh, right, two thousand bucks, a Sony Walkman, salt and pepper shakers, gold sovereign, and a three thousand dollar Chanel bag. I think it's been a pretty successful day here at the yeah. safety deposit yeah. boxes yeah. from Suzuki. Are we all going to have a cracking day at our small business setup? It opens in about ten minutes. You better get there. Yeah, no, no, no. Off you go. Good luck. I'll see you there. Thank you. We did the right thing. We never did the wrong thing to begin with. It's just all like a plan. Yeah. I don't like being accused, and then they completely lie about it and say, we didn't say that. Yes, you did. That's why we're so upset about it, is because you accuse us of lying, because you accuse us of cheating, and because you accuse us of being unfair. I'm not sitting there accusing her of cheating. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I wasn't being mean about it. I just addressed the issue that I didn't think that it was fair. But that's the problem, Sandra. We address the issues if we've got problems. They just bitch about it. Yeah. Returning to their market stalls, our warring tribes are pensive but determined. Off for free lollipops and a, and a little look at our shelf, but there's absolutely no one here. There's still 5000 bucks on offer to the team who can sell the most stock today. Yesterday, Beck and George came out on top selling $733 worth of stock. Matt and Kim got their shop in order, second with $650. Day two saw Maddie and Jared finish third, making 495 bucks in sales. Alicia and Lysandra need to get a move on. Second last with $310. 
And coming in in last place, poor Jono and Trixie, with 178 bucks in the cash register. And as the rain continues to pour, tensions continue to mount. I think we're currently sitting on $312, <laughs> which isn't going to get us far. It might get us a stool. Yeah. So we're really hoping this rain holds up. Holds up. <laughs> and that no one comes, because we've got a little plan today. The twins have a plan to beat them all. They're coming second last in the challenge, but yesterday we learned of a plan they've hatched, which they hope will clear their container in one sale. Yesterday we just called around to some second-hand furniture places just to see if they'd be interested in coming and buying some stuff. Um, we got in touch with one, or well, a couple, and she seems pretty keen to come and help us we out. We sent her some photos of the stuff we've got, and. So, yeah, I guess she just has to come and have a look for herself first. Yep. But the timing of her visit is everything. And again, the twins have it all worked out. Yeah, we don't want her coming too early and buying all the stock because then they might get an idea and do the same thing. So we're going to get her to come about 2.30 today and keep it on the down low. But I'm hoping, like, we can talk her into taking everything. Yeah. Like, clearing the entire shipment, because the others, that would be the funny thing. That's what. We're sweet as, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, you play it. See what you can do with three strings. Can I pay you to go away? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. Today, Matt's hit on a novel way to get the customers in. So I'm at the front of the street hustling with free lollipops to get people into our store. She's looking pretty desolate with the promise that everything's wholesale price um, and that they'd be most satisfied with our products. Uh, the only problem is everybody else is getting spin off from it too, so, you know, we get first looks though, which is cool. So if you guys want a further discount with him, do that. In fact, Every couple is coming up with novel ways to draw more customers in. Maddie's resorted to giving out free hugs. I'm going up there for a free hug. Go on. Go on. Are you ready? Yeah. Was that good? It's really awkward. Okay. One hug per five minutes. I'll wait. So you can come back in five minutes. <laughs> can, can, I just, can I just wait here? You sure can. Oh. It looks like Elisa and Lysandra are enjoying their first big sale. Yeah, that, that is an Pretty awesome cool. set, yeah. Yeah. We've had heaps of interest in that one, haven't yeah. we? 5.50 and we'll do delivery. OK, 5.50 uh, and delivery. Sold. <laughs> <laughs> With two big-ticket items sold, the girls have reached $1,000 in sales, pushing them close to first place. But even better news has just arrived. Mrs. Second Hand is here to look at the twin stock. Welcome to we Vintage Lane. We need to buy our stuff. <laughs> right, OK. Well, I'll see what I can do. I haven't got the final figure yet. I need to go and add it up. And uh, But I'm here to buy, and that they want to sell. So somewhere along there, there's going to be a deal, I think. It's 100% fair. It's just people might think of it uh, as not being fair. It's just smart. OK, let's make, oh, what about we make it 17.50 and I get a photo with you guys? <laughs> deal? Awesome. Deal? <laughs> deal? <laughs> Done deal? 50% off, guys, if you like anything in there. If Beck was having a bad day before, it's about to get even worse. What's happening with you guys? Are you giving it back to the salvo? <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Are you running with that? Yeah. We'll run with that. That's a good one. I didn't think of that. <laughs> Interesting. Around the stalls, reactions are mixed. I'm not sure if that's cheating. There wasn't really a clear definition of the rules. I suppose if Beck and George's family coming to buy stuff is cheating, then maybe. The difference is, we don't know her from our so she wouldn't come in and just buy anything to help us out. Um, it's completely different. Yeah, completely, completely different. Completely different. We're just playing yeah, the game she, in a different not, way. She's not family, she's not friends. Looks like they might be giving back to charity, I think, which is nice of them. I'm not sure that they're giving it back to charity. I think they're, they've made a bulk, a bulk sale. No, they wouldn't have. I think they've made a bulk sale. Ah. Oh. Less than an hour to go, take nothing home. With one hour to go, Matt is going for broke. He's even invited his builder to help out with their dwindling <laughs> sales. 
Legend. We're gonna go. Yeah, cool man. Thanks for coming down though. It's good, really yeah, good to meet you, Mrs. Yeah. and kids and everyone. Guess who finds out? You know, everyone harps on about playing fair and made a big issue about my dad buying candles. Well, pretty sure that getting your builder here to clean you out with a few items is just the same thing, really. I, I kind of a bit confused about how um, they were calling what we did yesterday unfair, but then they've called their builder and said, come down and, and have a look at our stuff and buy stuff. Their whole family just came in and bought me stuff. Yeah, like, that's cheating. When does it stop? I feel like I'm in high school again. I'm sold out. I've packed up. I've settled. I'm finished. It's done. All hugged out. Maddie and Jared have finally cleared out their container. Oh, I think we probably made $1,200 altogether or something like that. So we ran at a loss. <laughs> but we still got some more money to put back to the budget, so it's still a win, really. After seeing everyone else's sales tactics, Beck has had a change of heart about handing back the money her father gave her yesterday. So we've just decided that we're not taking anything off what we sold, that it's completely fair, and if we win the 5000 I wouldn't mind donating some money to charity on our own accord. First of all, that's for the stock. Thank you. The other 50's in the pocket. We'll do the, <laughs> the photo. photo. <laughs> that is the end of business for the market stalls today. Lock them all up, head back to HQ, and we'll tally up the money. Good luck. Thanks. Coming up, Maddie and the twins have it out. They were filming that whole conversation from down the bottom. So it wasn't one thing in front of the cameras. The cameras were there the whole time. It's the end of a gruelling three-day challenge. And on the way to HQ, tempers are frayed and emotions boil over. I get it, I'll just put it in my GPS, but I'm not a mind reader, I shouldn't have to do everything. It'd be nice if you could just take responsibility. You don't need to be a mind reader, I just asked you. I'm doing it! Shut up! No matter what, I'm really happy with how we went. And battle fatigue is setting in. I'm shattered. Now we're back to where we started tonight, My HQ, where it's time to tally up the takings. How are you going? Good. Hello. Good. There you are. Did we all enjoy running our very own small businesses yeah. today? Yeah, cool. Good yeah. fun. Well, I think that you all had your retail caps on. You all did a fantastic job, but some better than others. Don't forget that everybody is going to be going away with some money today. All the money you made will be, of course, going back into your renovation budgets back at the block. The team, of course, that made the most money today will take home a further 5000 bucks from our friends at NAB. Huge money. Mm. Would you like to know how much you all made combined? Yes. Yeah. OK. As a total group in sales in your small business, you made... Ooh, just wow. over 10000 bucks. Wow. Pretty good. Now, I'm going to show you your total monetary scores in apartment order. And considering that Jono and Trixie won the best dressed store, we thought we'd start at the penthouse at the bottom here, number five. You ready to go? Are you sure you're not just starting with the lowest? <laughs> <laughs> that would be coincidental, but no. <laughs> All righty. Jono and Trixie. Yeah. You made a total. Oh! <laughs> yes! Well done. Yes. <laughs> High five and an air punch. Well done. Maddie and Jared. You made a total of... <sighs> Everybody's a winner today in this challenge. Beck and George. That's some serious coin in the budget. Matt and Kim. <laughs> oh, yeah. Two bucks. Oh. oh, my God. Wow. Whoa. All right, girls. Oh. 
to number two. 5,000 bucks on the line here, people. Quick, quick, quick. It's a nine. Nine. Oh, I need help. Good job. Wow, that's a good day. That is amazing. You can see how close oh, that was. Babe. It was less than 150 bucks. Matt and Kim, you are so close. Again, right. so close. So close. $2,962. Which was, I think, $150 more than um, Matt and Kim. So, on top of that, because we won the most, we made the most, we also won another $5,000. So, it's, that makes almost $10,000 today. Beat us by 100 bucks. Yeah. What are you going to do? There's some very innovative thinking on their behalf, however, for yeah. doing what they did today. That's pretty cool. Cha-ching. <laughs> Alrighty, troops, that was a tough three days. You all did a great job. You ran your own small businesses. You've all got some cash. We can head back to the block and finish off our kitchens. Scotty. Oh! <laughs> Stop! Hello. I would love to hear from you, Trixie. What do you have to say? I'll try to say it without crying. <laughs> yes. But, um, I had a bit of a bad day yesterday. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was sort of thinking about how we always push all our tradies constantly in this and we're always asking people to do things the whole way along and you get quite self-absorbed in this competition and I was getting a little bit sick of it so I thought to make myself and do something for someone else today so I decided and I told all my customers that whatever profits we made today would go to the Victorian Cancer Council on behalf of Beck and George. I know it's not very much, but it's something. <laughs> so, Trix, you're saying that your 862 smackaroonies are going to the Cancer Council? Yeah. Yep. That's fantastic, Trixie and Jono. Well done. Thank you. All righty, everybody, head back to the block, get some kitchen work done. Thank you. Thanks, <laughs> Trixie. You didn't have to do that. You didn't have to do that. The Cha-Ching twins have now amassed almost $30,000 in winnings. I just don't know how we'll ever keep up now. Like, no. when someone's earned nearly $30,000 over two and a half, it's just you can't compete with it. I mean, what Trixie and Jenna did was obviously a really generous thing, considering they don't have any money. Yeah, whether it was... Um, I don't know, the smartest thing for the competition. If we had 28 grand, man, this place would be like a knockout. We need another $20,000 on top of what we've won to really finish off this farm and how we want. So I know that sounds really greedy and ungrateful, but if we can win this kitchen, even if we won an another 10,000, we'll be happy with that. We'll be happy. It just turned the one challenge that George and I really were enjoying into an uncomfortable, um, saga. What made it more uncomfortable was people saying one thing to some and other things to others. Like, you guys just made it kind of clear that you thought we were fake and everything like well, that. Well, there is a certain truth to that. I know, but, you know, we just left it at that. You know, if that's how you feel about us, that's how you feel about us. No, I just feel like you say something to our face when the cameras aren't around, and then well, whenever even, you're confronted about it... The like, cameras were you know, filming when she was no, up there. Even with the, let they me were bring filming up. that whole conversation from down the bottom. So it wasn't one thing in front of the cameras, the cameras were there the whole time. You know, it's a bit of a hard one. Yeah, I know. But it's not really that fair, I don't think. No. No, I don't think that's fair at all. Mm. And that's the thing, like, because I... take the situation away. Yeah. You know, and I'd yeah. definitely kick up a yeah. fuss about it, but... Later in the day, Trixie and Maddie changed their tune. So... My dad just came in and bought all my candles because mm -hmm. um, he wants to burn them next to my mum's photo, which yeah. is really sweet. The girls and Kim think it's technically cheating. I want to make it fair for everybody, so I'm willing to split what he spent between each couple, so... I don't care what you do. Me do I. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but there's no difference between what I did at any of those points. I was the same across the board. Annoyed at the twins. Why? Saying that Trixie and I were lying. I didn't love it how Maddie always says one thing, like when the cameras aren't there, and whenever she's put on the spot or 
situation. Oh, she just sense. wants to come across as she's good at two shoes. Yeah. Yeah, they just they've just got no consideration for other people and their feelings at all, and they definitely don't have a filter between their mouth and brain. And it's just not fair. You don't treat people like that, and you don't make up stuff like that. It's like they're out to cause trouble 24/7 and see how far it gets them. So she's just weak. She's weak. A new day, another drama. It's certainly beginning to look like a soap opera. Look, I'm sure people aren't happy that we've won so much money now, but the vibe's fine. It's not like we're getting these negative vibes. There's the straight shooting cops still rejoicing from yesterday's win. Yeah, they keep talking about, oh, be honest and come and tell us to our faces if we do something. Well, as soon as you say something, they attack you. Beck, our tell it like it is urban princess. I told you. I told you on the phone. I wasn't on the end of the phone. Maddie, the lovely girl next door, or is she? Kim, the second place getter, always the bridesmaid, never the bride. You just can't talk to them because it, it would end up in a fight. They just instantly go to fight mode. And the down to earth mum from Queensland, Trixie. Like any good Australian soapy, the boys are forming groups. So we started a wolf pack. George is just in the shower. I think he should be out soon. So when he gets out, I'll give him his jumper. What are you doing? <laughs> you can be a part of my, my wolf pack. That's the biggest privilege since I've been on the block. <laughs> I could almost say it looks like he's been tailored to pick <laughs> You know what? You could probably just say that. And the love is currently spreading upwards. Oh. So you're part of our wolf pack. <laughs> hey, Maddie! We're, we're, having a, we're having a moment here. Hey, Maddie! Check it out, girls. Well, hello. Hey. Oh. <laughs> I'd rather have our own pack. I don't want to be part of the wolf pack. We can get cooler jumpers than that. Yeah, I don't want to have to push my way into a group. Groups hunt me down and pick me. I shouldn't have to ask to be in a group. It seems the wolf pack is an exclusive club. I don't really know if Matt's really going to care about this whole kind of trivial wolf pack thing because he doesn't really seem overly interested in hanging out with the boys. They've gone out a couple of times and invited him and he's kind of turned down the offer. All attention now turns to not just the kitchens, but pantry and bar as well. All due at the end of the week. So the gloves are on this week, like we are taking this one out. It's we, our turn. we need this win. <laughs> Matt and Kim make an arty statement with silhouette-style kitchen cabinets, and in the pantry, they've gone for a recycled timber feature wall. In their bar area, there's a 170-bottle wine rack and wine fridge. It's crazy to think in four days that we're going to be delivering a finished kitchen. The twins' kitchen reeks of cash. There's twin ovens with matching stainless microwave and coffee machine built in. The bar has been turned into a compact but classy home office. Well, we have been labelled the bathroom queen, so let's hope. hope. We saw we Matt and Kim's floor and, oh, <laughs> let's hope we can be the kitchen queens. We've already spent so much extra on the kitchen with the integrated fridge, integrated dishwasher, coffee concrete machine, bench, coffee inbuilt machine. coffee machine. We've spent a lot of extra money on the kitchen. With so much cash poured into it, the twins' kitchen will be hard to beat. Unfortunately for them, um, with all their money, they're still on the bottom level. Mm. Um, I think if we, if we don't finish our level, I'm pretty sure we'd still beat them at auction day. Don't tell Jono, but traditionally on the block, it's the lower levels that come out on top come auction day. That's if they make auction day. What's your mood like this morning, Tony? Oh, we're broke. Just doing the last final decision making on the kitchen. 
And I think this will come close. If I pay all my tradies up to date, then we'll have no more money left. After this room, we're out. I don't know how Trixie and Jono are going to finish. They would be, they're in struggle town, without a doubt. And to add to their woes, there's a mystery leak. It's like looking wet everywhere. And it's definitely growing, because it was only like about that big this morning, wasn't it? Worst case scenario is that it's a plumbing problem, somehow. Um, and we'd have to basically pull out the vanity, rip off all the tiles, probably pull the toilet out, big dollars. It seems to be the curse of the penthouse that everywhere we go, we get flooded. Want more of the block sky high? Head to 9msn.com.au forward slash the block or download Jump In for exclusive interviews, videos and all the behind the scenes news you won't get anywhere else. It's only days till their biggest delivery and the block clock is ticking. It's going right to the wall. It'd be nice if we had 50 grand. <laughs> be nice if we had a hundred. <laughs> the centrepiece of Jono and Trixie's kitchen is the island bench with an integrated dining area. They've taken the clean, bright and simple theme through into the pantry. And in the bar area, there's a drinks fridge and storage. And they've squeezed a study nook in there as well. Jared and Maddie have gone with the island bench idea too. They've got two cylinder-shaped extractor fans above the cooktop. The fridge is in the pantry, along with plenty of storage. And they've turned the bar area into a dedicated laundry. You no, know, I just feel like you say something to our face when the cameras aren't around, and then well, whenever even, you're confronted about it... Like, the cameras were you know, filming when she was up no, there. Even with the, they were filming up. that whole conversation. Yesterday's face-off between the twins and Maddie is still creating friction. Maddie had a... Um, sort of an argument with them yesterday while Beck and I sat there and listened and we both just said we wanted it to stop. They were going on and on to her about being fake and being this and being that and I just think it's absolutely ridiculous and embarrassing. That's why it's getting it was really actually annoying me that the situation had escalated to what it had because that's not usually the relationships that I have with people. On the block, relationships are important, especially when you need something. Hey, do you have any sound check? Because these are sold out. Jared and Maddie ordered 47 sheets. Did they? And ordered the whole lot. I don't think we do. Uh, I think ours is not sound check. All right, well, we got sent. But when Kim knocks her back, her only other option is to work her way up the building, where she's not as popular. Hey, Maddie. Do you know how many jet rock sheets we could borrow? I don't know. <laughs> Jared, do you have any yeah. jet rock sheets we could borrow? Um, I'm just doing a quick count up, but it's yeah, looking cool. tight. But um, I've come to take stuff for you guys as well. <laughs> you have a 6.5 mil hammer drill bit? Oh. We might. Mason and Joe got 6 mil. 6 is probably there. Yeah. She was first, you yeah, count for her on. <laughs> What are we, like, the highest shop? <laughs> Anyone else? The, the materials thing isn't competitive for us because if we had run out, which we might one day, we would very much hope that one of the other teams would let us use some of theirs if they had spares. Um, so you want two more? We'll just take these for now, right? These yeah. four, and if we need more, we'll come back. Yeah. Maddie has come to a decision about her dealings with the twins. I'm going to make an effort to relate to them the way they want to be related to and Trixie she didn't want to do that she felt like she didn't she shouldn't give them anything they wanted but that's Trixie's relationship with them that's not mine I'm trying to make amends with mine and do what they want <laughs> seriously your views are amazing they're pretty special you don't notice it like I mean we can see it from ours but obviously it's different this high I don't have any hostility towards them in that sense where I'm just trying to move forward but she may be the only one prepared to give peace a chance 
Oh, we're polite to them now. Yeah, we're polite. At least it's at a point where we're talking to them now. Yeah. But I, there's never going to be a... No. Hey, let's go out for a drink or anything. Blockaholics out there, take a page from this book and learn a lesson from this. When you do bad by people, it comes and bites you in the butt and their day is going to come. Without them here, I reckon I would have such a good time every day. Everyone would be like happy to see each other, no dramas. Despite the rising temperature on every level, everyone has to get down to business. After all, there is a room to deliver. Matt has to make serious headway with his super glossy 3D kitchen floors. Um, it's my first crack at my end though, so I don't really know what's expected of me. George and Beck have gone for a central island bench, then created a feeling of space by leaving one wall free of cupboards. And they're ready to party with a dedicated bar area, complete with a bar top and plenty of storage. As they go to pick up their imported designer tiles, George is coming to grips with how much they've cost. Eleven hundred bucks. Excuse my French. <laughs> They're designer tiles. Oh, I must stop hurting hearing this word. It's a designer cushion, designer tile, designer, designer wallpaper, designer wallpaper. <laughs> Designer carpet, designer floorboards. Well, technically everything's designed. So everything's a designer. It's a designer car. <laughs> designer zipper <Zipa> putty. <laughs> this is my designer husband. Yeah. <laughs> While George and Beck take the stress in their stride, it's leading to a complete breakdown in communication with Maddie and Jared. If we we might end up having to get a glass splash back, so you may as Hello! Can you hear me? I'm annoying. Yes. What? You're on your phone. I'm on my phone. You and your phone are annoying. I'm I... doing things. Oh, doesn't matter. We might have to have glass flashback. So if the walls need to be gyp rocked in order to have glass flashback, then you need to gyp rock them in case. There's no mixed messages with the twins. They hope they have an idea that will set their kitchen apart from the rest. I think our main feature in the kitchen this week is probably our recessed indoor hair boxes. I'm hoping no one else has done this. So the lady from the vertical garden place came and we've mm. sort of worked out what we want to do. Or being a kitchen, you could put herbs. That's a lot of people do that. Herbs. So you know, yeah. that kind of, you know, Jamie Oliver grabbing, you know, cooking and putting it on the plate sort of thing like that. Yeah, which was really exciting. We're getting a designer herb garden. We noticed a few wet spots on the carpet before and um, it was sort of puzzling me where it was coming from. On top of everything, Jono and Trixie's mystery leak is threatening to derail their entire reno. Well, it's pretty obvious. You can see that this concrete's wet here. It stopped raining probably six hours ago. So it's dried up, but it's pretty obvious. Look, all this is wet. In a way, though, it's a good thing. It's not their plumbing. Anyway, we'll get the boys to do a more thorough job in the tarpon next time and um, hopefully it won't happen again. Mystery solved. It's not their fault. It's Keith's. Well, good news. I've located the problem. Oh, brilliant. The task failed. Oh, OK. I feel terrible about this. No, that shouldn't fine. happen. And now I'm actually embarrassed over it. It's definitely not as bad as what it could have been. We could have flooded the whole level. It's a big win for Jono and Trixie. Keith's discovery has saved them thousands, but Jono has other things on his mind. It's Trixie's birthday tomorrow. She's turning 
and I've organised a boat cruise for her. Um, it's a secret. She doesn't know about it. Yeah. So I don't know exactly know whether it... I might play it out that it's just her and I going and then you guys can... Just be there. Jump on and surprise her. Everyone or just us? Everyone. Well, that'd be nice. I'm just making sure. Not, but the not, guest not. list may pose some problems. Hello. Hello. Um, I just thought I'd come and invite you to Trix's, Trix's turning <laughs> tomorrow. Oh, wow. So, um, I've organised a trip Take out. Take life insurance. <laughs> 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 I've organised a trip on a boat down the Yarra. We're aiming for around 7 o'clock tomorrow night. Yay, how exciting. Okay. Awesome. Right. Cool. Thanks. With three other rooms on his mind, the last thing George wants to discuss is the laundry. Oh, what I'm thinking potentially is this space where you've got that little corner there as well. So potentially set back a little bit, have bifold doors. All right, where's George? George? Yes? Can you come here? No. Come on, George. I can't. I'm busy. You just need to help with this design for a minute. What's that, guys? We're saying in that bit, by fold doors. Because you, what are you going to do? Open up onto the toilet. Whatever. And then, do you reckon we'd be able to move this doorway or not? It's too much work. As night rolls in, the Renaults roll on. George and Beck aren't the only ones concerned about the quantity and the quality of the work that needs to get done. I don't think Kim quite understands <laughs> how tight this is going to be. I haven't really stressed it yet, but I just feel like now we could be in a bit of trouble. Tomorrow night, if Matt is stressing about his workload, he's not showing it. Good spot. And the cops end up as catch of the day. <laughs> When Constable Keith spots something fishy... I can see an issue. It's a 600 hollow core door bloke. Yeah? It's got less weight than me dog ball. War of words erupts. What if I get the other carpenters to get yeah. their take on it? He can squeeze my jam and I will squeeze his downstairs. And if mine moves more or the same as one downstairs, I'll change it. 